So this is a video that I really dreaded doing. And it's not for the reasons I had first thought, which was that someone will find it that I know and just shame me forever with it. But it really has to do with wanting to convey what has happened and what I've experienced in an effort to potentially offer some relief to another person who might see it. I don't know. I just, uh, I'm just going to try and do this the best way I can. So I have not had the best luck with, uh, people of the opposite sex, you know, dating and all that. And, an often repeated line I hear is that you have to love yourself first and you, know, you have to care about you and like you more than anybody else on the planet and all that. And Every time I try to exude fake, com fake confidence, and it is fake because there are some days where I just feel like I'm the worst thing that's ever existed and I like to believe that's not the case um, for reasons such as this. And every time I do it, it just it you have people have the ability to see through the veneer, to see through this counterfeit pride that I'm displaying, and that's what I think messes me up with uh, with uh, the opposite sex. I'm just gonna keep saying the opposite sex because I want to sound all educated and scholarly like as I uh, delve into this personal story that will motivate millions. Not really. Uh, probably only get like three views anyway, so whatever. The biggest issue I have with that logic is that people always talk about being humble, uh, having a sense of humility. And I have a lot of my humility just by kind of being broken down in other ways. So I'll get, an example would be I consider myself pretty well versed in history and politics, really, which you can kind of intertwine history with if you put them together. Uh, and English, uh, you know, I don't speak very fluently, but I, I have some uh, occasional good papers that I, I'll get all, all right grades on. And there was a, uh, a rally at my school this uh, past day. And they had a uh, joint project for my English and history class. And it was supposed to honor students who turned in some paper with some other thing that was great and fantastic and contributing to society. And I, I wasn't one of those students. And like stuff like that, I can, you know, that brings me down even more. That further pushes my ego down because it says to me, Okay, you might think you're the best at this, but you're really not. And I, you know, I'm I'm really trying not to get off topic too much. That's why I'm about to get off this uh, subject. But when I'm so bad in classes like math and the different forms of science, I, you know, I kind of say this is all I've got: history and uh, English. So that that was really just kind of the most disappointing thing about yesterday, whatever. The big concern I have with uh, dating is that they, they talk about the nice guys for this last thing and how that's whatever. You know, with me, I don't, I generally just in real, in, in life outside of the internet, I don't go around messing with people. I like to leave positive comments. If I don't have something nice to say, I, I try not to say anything at all. I just, I don't like confrontation. And I guess in being, and I'll admit on my part, there has been a, a, a lack of being assertive at times. I'll admit, I'll, I'll concede that. But it's primarily due to my wishes not to in any way potentially initiate a confrontation. And I, I really have kind of, again, admittedly, intertwined confrontation with being assertive. And I think that's messed me up even more uh, just in the spectrum of dating and being able to get dates. But I generally, whenever I feel 
good, which is, you know, when I wake up in the morning, it's not something I think about when I go to school. Just really in social interactions where people are allowed to display, I'm, I'm going to say display, display public displays effects. I didn't want to say display twice because it's a mediocre tongue twister, but, you know, I like to not be too repetitious with my words. That's a problem. And, and again, I'm faking the smile because I'm really trying to not just lose it over this. Uh, it's so hard to see people holding hands and making out and, and doing all the little nicknames for each other, which I've, I've never really been into, but whatever, just kind of affectionate ways of referring to each other and other uh, nice words they'll uh, say about the other person. And not feel like you're missing out on something. And I guess the biggest reason this bothers me out of anything else, it's not something like grades, where for the most part I feel I have the ability just by myself to change. I'm the one who's going to take the test. I'm the one who's going to have to try to get into the schools I want to go to. That's all on me. But in the context of a relationship, it has to be a two-person thing, and I can't, I can't force it. That's why I've never understood people trying to clown other people on not dating. I mean, if the person doesn't want me back, what am I supposed to do? I can't make them. So that, that's always been my, my biggest confusion with people who try to put others and go, oh, you're single, that's why you're single. <laughs> no, this, this is dumb. It's always ridiculous when I hear um, little lines made about how this person is this way and that's why nobody likes them and that's why they can't get with anybody. How, how do you know? It's just uh, that, That's always been a little pet peeve of mine because of the fact that it's something you, you need another person's, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, permission to initiate. You need the consent of... The significant other, that's why they're called significant other. It's a process and decision made by both people. And really, uh, the saving grace that I kept thinking about was that I would... It, there's this often repeated line that if you're a nerd, I guess you're going to college and you'll make something of yourself there. And oh, all the girls will feel regretful that they didn't get with you. But do I really have to go through six, seven, and I'd, I'd go through it anyway, but do I really have to do all of that just to get with some, some girls that didn't act as if I didn't, even I didn't exist? I have to go through multiple years of college and acquire some job that is going to make it to where I, I'm financially stable and I don't even, what, what will you have to offer me then? That's what I'm, I'm getting at. And if and I, I thought about that scenario, and I know my mindset. If a person knows what I have, and this is why I often downplay everything that I possess, and they, you know, express interest after learning this, it starts to form in my head that they are potentially a gold digger. And that's more that's mostly apparent with uh women that I come across in real life than anything else. That's one of the good things about the internet is that people don't know what you have or who you are or any of that. So in a way, I feel a little more comfortable just because I can kind of, if someone is interested in talking to me, I think it's more authentic than anything else. But every time I, I, I think of that scenario of, oh, yeah, you're going to work your way up and show those those uh, those chicks from high school that, you, you know, you were great and they should have done this and they should have done that. Why do I have to do that just to get a date? You know, I don't want to wait six, seven years on one person. And then if I go to the school and I, you know, I'm running across, and th this is another problem. You know, if you, they talk about, oh, you meet somebody in college. Who's to say that person's even there? This is really what just what strains me about um, romantic life are these continued promises that, that keep getting made. Oh, that person exists. They're somewhere. They're out there. 
And you hear these stories about the, oh, these two people got together when they were 16 and 17. And they've been together for 80 years. Like, uh, what is it? So somebody I was, I, their, their name escapes me. There's an example of that. Then you have this other couple that got together in their 30s and they've been together for you know, the, the long span of time. All I'm getting at is I shouldn't have to wait two decades or another 10 years to experience that. I really shouldn't. Why, why do I have to keep having these prolonged periods where I'm just waiting for happiness? And that's part of the reason why, why I was as excessive about trying to do this as I possibly could, because I don't, I don't take things for granted. I don't just believe that things are going to fall into my lap. You know, I, I've never, I've never done that. I've never believed that people were just going to magically flock to me and, oh, if they, if they see what I can do, they're all going to come my way. I've never believed that. And I, I hate that narrative about college and dating. That's just so, and it's worse because it, it paints every, and this is just specific. Well, you can apply it to both sexes. It paints um, both men and women who go after college educated women and men as gold diggers because you're saying essentially that all they want them for is their money and, and i really i can't get behind that i can't so that, that's the th another part of this whole story that kind of frustrates me and i apologize for rambling but this is really like, this is the only video i want to make about this i don't want to make no more this is it this is the first and last installment. I don't want any updates. The other part is the uh, continued, continued line I hear about. Uh, they women only want bad boys or thugs or some kind of. I really I don't believe that uh, because I, I just I can't picture you. There are too many. And this is why I really I don't take dating advice from people who generalize, who say, oh, women like this, girls like that, because their people are so different, so unique in ways that I can't even begin to put into words, that you really can't go by, I mean, if you get an example of a, how, what a person likes, you know, okay, that's one guy, you know, you, that might be different from what I like. And they're going to say, oh, well, guys like this. What if I don't like that? What, is, what does that make me? Lesser of a man? Because I don't fit the stereotype you tried to place me into? That's all I'm, that's all I'm getting at. The, the, dating advice of that kind, I, I like to ignore and go after the results of just kind of seeing how a person actually behaves and whether or not they're going to retain that behavior. If I like the behavior the first time, I'm going to like it the second time. If they retain it, that is. Because I've had, I've had people reveal uh, other aspects of themselves. And, I, and another thing is that I understand that there are parts of personalities that people have that, you know, are undesirable. I have undesirable parts about myself. I'll admit right now, I'm not... Uh, two week, I don't have that big of an ego. Some of my projects are named after me for the sole purpose of boosting that ego, to add validity that basically if you watch this, you've accepted me in a way. Uh, you give me the time of day, and I haven't had that in my own personal private life. And, you know, that means more to me than a lot of other things. I'll, I'll concede that I have one of the worst self-esteems ever. And I don't think it will get any better until... I get a date. They keep saying you need to build that up before you get one. I'm I'm really believing it's the reverse way. I honestly believe that because I wouldn't have this view of every time I walk into a, a meeting some new girl, it's always oh I know this isn't gonna work. I'm uh, my my as well even try, say hi, but that's it. No, I, I, that won't work every single time. Every time, I I, I meet. It's been this way for probably the last. I want to say a year and a half. Every time I meet a new, um, they call them love interest. It's always just I know, I, I know I won't, won't, won't win, won't get them, and that's that leads me to just give up. Just you know, go hi, oh hi, yeah, what's up, hey, just be bummed out. 
because it, it's it's like a destiny you can't change, and that's what scares me more than anything else. That my consistent attempts at uh, going after or pursuing women will continue to end up the same way they've been going for the last two years of just not being able to attract anyone and just continuing to lower and lower and lower my self-esteem to where it's in the gutter. I mean, I could feign, uh, in, you know, this real big ego about, oh, I can write real good and I can draw real good. But no one likes that. No one cares about that. Like, I don't know anyone who's interested. In all, and that's what gets on my nerves. I don't have any... That That's the view I'm about to express right now. I just almost jumped into it. Jumped into it. I, had to, I had to catch myself. I honestly believe at times I have no interest that appeals to anyone. I, you know, no one my age likes politics. No one my age, if they like to draw, they certainly don't like watching other people do it. And half people my age probably don't even read anyways. Why would they care about something I wrote? Why would they care about me being able to convey ideas or attempt to convey ideas through YouTube? Why would any of that appeal to anybody? And that that's just what it gets me about everything, just kind of this whole feeling of you are not wanted, you are not interesting to anybody. And that, that further sinks in this idea that I won't end up with anyone ever, no matter what I do. And, and that's the part of this that really just brings me down more than anything else, that that, that there is no payoff to the disappointment and otherwise disillusion that I face. I mean, there are some days when I, I see uh, girls I find attractive that I, I just want to just stay at home and not even not even look, not even bother to check them out. And I kind of try to laugh now to just keep my mind off. They're not going the direction of going into depression. I try to stay out of there as much as possible. That's why I make laugh when I'm talking these videos. I try to smile as much as I can. Because I really want to stop myself from, you know, again, it's because if it's been going on for so long, I know how to deal with it a little bit better than I used to. I try real hard to just take it off my mind and not allow it to consume me entirely. Because when it does, I, I head into those depressive states and it's not good for me and not good for anybody else. But I just... You know, because all my problems, like, I just always trace them back to me. It's all my fault. It's all me. It's always me. I read one website that said, regardless if it's the girls you pursue or it's the kind of guy you are, it's on you. It's your fault. And that's why I feel it's my fault. It's my fault. It's always going to be 100% my fault. You know, you d didn't make the cut. You never will. That's really how I feel at times. That's how I feel right now.